Within efforts to uphold research integrity, a lot of focus recently has been on the so-called sleuth or data detectives, and they are also aggregated around disciplines such as forensic metascience, forensic scientometrics, and I want to be clear that I don't want to take away from the value of the work that these individuals, sometimes groups, sometimes even um, companies are doing to try to uh, identify um, papers that are fraudulent or that have not been written as authors claim they were written, produced by artificial intelligence or um, in other ways unethical. But I think there is a danger here in not being critical about the efforts that go under sleuthing. So first of all, there is a general idea that these are uh, individuals or groups that are cleaning up the literature and the boundaries of what they are doing are very porous. So sometimes we are talking about um, identifying signs of misconduct or fraud. Even misconduct is defined in various ways. Sometimes it can just mean bad statistical practices, whereas in other occasions it can go to data fabrication or doing things without having informed consent or ethical approval. But uh, what exactly is this cleaning and what are the characteristics of the parts of the literature that we want to take out? And there is no clear definition of this. So any activities that is identified with a sluice could go under this. And I'm afraid that there is a risk here for what is known as concept creep when a definition expands uh, very much and it starts to include a lot of things that initially were not part of it where, for example, papers might be retracted now because they use statistical methods that were adequate at the time, they were part of the norm at the time, like simple mediation analysis, but now are considered to be uh, wrong. So this is uh, one thing that is important. Another thing that is important is understanding that sleuths do not operate on a different moral framework than, than study authors. So uh, it's very rare to see, for example, conflict of interest declarations or to even have a discussion, uh, an honest discussion about transparency related to sleuth ideas, uh, activities. Sorry. We are always told they are doing this work voluntarily, this is so much time, this is um, labor that is unpaid, that gets so much criticism. But it should be standard, like it is for scientists, like it is for peer reviewers, that any kind of potential conflicts of interest, financial or non-financial, are declared. Another thing I worry about is that there is uh, a big variety of methods that sleuths are using, and some of these methods are not even fully described. Some are very... Um, have been studied very little. We have in general very little data about um, the effects, the reliability of the methods that are used. There are now some collections of practices, but again, each of the tools in the sleuth toolbox should be accompanied by an evaluation at least of reliability, as we ask from scientists regarding their own methods. So I think this is another important thing. More uh, attention should go into looking at the methods of sleuth. And recently this is starting to happen. There are um, interesting papers that apply uh, sleuthing techniques to a large collection of literature and report the results. So uh, it, it's definitely starting to change. So while I don't think uh, uh, critically of these approaches. And I think in many ways I do some of this myself. I like to call it post-publication peer review. I do think sleuth and uh, these forensic approaches should not be seen as operating in a different, on a different reality and in a different moral framework than scientists. There are individuals like the rest of us, so they should be uh, subjected to the same kind of scrutiny that scientists are in terms of conflict of interest, in terms of their methods, in terms of how they are reported. Often, uh, frequently, we just hear of the slow success cases, the cases where they successfully identify misconduct or another problem. We very rarely hear about the cases where somebody had a suspicion and tried to probe that using sleuthing tools and came up empty-handed. And often when we do the rare occasions where we do hear these stories, they are presented in a way like they are telltale stories that sometimes, you know, 
you cannot get the suspect. You know, in a police metaphor, you know the person is guilty, but you cannot get enough evidence. And I think it's a dangerous path to track. Uh, and, and instead, the focus should be on uh, also presenting the negative evidence and also presenting the cases in which your methods failed.